on House Speaker Paul Ryan to Leanne oh, Tweeden on the right side of the screen. She is the woman uh, who has accused Senator Al Franken of groping her and kissing her back in 2006. Let's listen in. I was violated. I just felt like, you know, he betrayed my trust and it obviously that is not what I wanted and that's I felt like he wrote that just to get that piece in because he knew he wasn't going to get it on stage and that was that was why he was badgering me to do it then when we were alone because that's what he wanted and then you know five minutes later we had to go out on stage and I always joke I'm I've always been I, I've never been an actress so people always think when you're in Hollywood I was a model and then I was a television host and and people are like oh you're an actress I've never been an actress. That's a whole different set of talent, and, and I've, I've, I don't act. And I had to be an actress. You know, I had to go out on stage with this guy who just did this to me five minutes before and act like he's my best friend and Al Franken, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the greatest thing ever, and do our lines. And, and trust me, he didn't even get close to my face when, when we had to come in for the kissing scene. And... It's it's funny because when this whole Harvey Weinstein thing came out in the last like two weeks when I was deciding is this the time I tell my story and I was just lo looking online and trying to find videos and t you know recalling everything that happened in my mind from from this time 10 years ago 11 years ago and I found a blog of a soldier who was at one of our shows in Afghanistan or, or Iraq and he he just talks about his experience at the show just as a, a guy in the audience and he said you know al franken and leanne tweeden were great co-mcs and al told a couple of jokes and then then al goes in for a kiss or more from leanne and fails and i just thought yeah that's exactly what happens and he failed every time because that's what happens on stage and you know i thought as a, it, it would be um the joke would always have been to me, the funny part was, it would have been like Al would have, you know, in my mind, Al would have just come in for a kiss and I would have turned my face or I would have put my hand on his mouth. And that would have been the funny part, right? That would have been like this old guy coming in for the kiss from the hot girl or whatever. You know, the skit would have been to these young troops and it would have been funny because it was comedy, right? Obviously, it turned out completely different, but, you know, so I had to act my way through the rest of the shows for the next two weeks, 10 days, two weeks. Um, and I just made sure I was never alone with him again. I never told, I didn't tell the Sergeant Major of the Army what happened. I didn't tell our USO rep kids, what was I gonna do? Be the troublemaker, be like, okay, I'm gonna MC every part of the show for the hour, except the 10 minutes I'm on stage with Al. You know, I just sucked it up. I'm a strong girl, I'm a sportscaster. So I deal with guys every day. I'm just gonna fake it and act like an actress and do this part with him and then, not talk to him for the rest of the, you know rest of the tour. I mean, it's a it was a big tour with a lot of people. I just didn't I didn't socialize with him. I didn't talk to him for the rest of the tour. I made sure I was never alone with him again. I mean, we were in tight quarters, but there were a lot of people around, so I just made sure I was never alone with him again and um so I didn't have to deal with him in that respect again other than when we were on stage. Uh and then you know, little petty things that I had to deal with, just snide comments. Um, we would do autograph sessions after the shows. Uh, of course, they would set up tables. And because there would be sometimes thousands of troops at an event, and we would only have so much time. So there would be long tables for all the, you know, the country music artists and the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders who were very popular, by the way. And then, um, instead of like trying to have a single file line of you know a thousand guys trying to come down and get everybody's autograph they would open it up to where you everybody if you wanted somebody a certain autograph and there was only time for people to wait in one line they would just open it up to where people could just stand in the line that they would want instead of filing it through like this so sometimes there would be honest to god nobody in al franken's line so people would line up the girls would have long lines some of the country music artist guys would have long lines so I would always be sat next to Al because that's just how they always set it up. And so I would always sort of have my back to him and whatever, and I'd be sitting next to the other people. And we'd have lines, we would sign autographs, and I mean, it was just hours of signing and taking pictures with troops. And one time he didn't have people in his line, and 
I would see things out of the corner of my eye and I'd see, you know, like a hand and a picture, one of my autograph pictures go like this and, you know, and I would look over one time and, you know, one time I would just see and a picture would come back and it would be, you know, my face with devil horns and the, the, the devil tail and the pitchfork and the goatee and, you know, I mean, these are the things I'm dealing with, right? Like, he draws me as the devil. I'm like, okay, childish, belittling, whatever. It's just like, <laughs> that's, uh, two weeks of this is what I'm getting at, sorry. And uh, so whatever, so I make it through the, the two weeks of that. And then um, we're on our way home. We leave, uh, pretty sure it's Bagram Air Base. We're leaving out of Afghanistan. And every time you take off from a, um, from a base when you're in the middle of combat, you always wear a Kevlar helmet uh, and, a, and a flak vest. Um, because when you leave from a, um, in the middle of a war zone, you do wear your, your, your gear because small arms fire or even an RPG like a rocket propelled grenade can, can pierce the armor uh, or pierce the, the skin of an airplane. And so a lot of times you either sit on Kevlar or you, you wear it because you can be shot at through a plane. So you're wearing it as you take off until you get high enough altitude where you're out of that reach and then you can take it off. So I'm wearing it, I fall asleep because I can fall asleep usually before the plane even takes off. So I'm sleeping up against the side of the plane. Um, and in the photo, if you see the photo, beside me is Mark Wills, a country singer. He's also asleep. Um, so I'm sleeping, which anybody that knows me, I sleep anywhere, anytime, so I'm asleep. Uh, and um, there are photographers on the trip, and I'm pretty sure it was a, probably the photographer of the tour that took the picture, but they give you CDs as you leave that have, you know, behind the scenes photos of you on the entire tour that they give you when you leave. And uh, I get this and I open it up when I get home. Um, I probably opened it the next day. And it was a photo of Al doing his, you know, this on my breast, like looking at the camera, just kind of smirking and smiling, like, hey, look at me. And I took that as the, you know, the final, like, <laughs> like I got the last laugh, um, you know. I mean, he knew I wouldn't see it until, until I got home and, you know, was away from everybody else. And, and uh, you know, like I said, the, the, to know it in the context of the entire trip and what, what happened in the entire two weeks um, is, is telling to me and, and just the, the fact that um, he just thought he could get away with it and that it was okay and that it was funny and you know I knew I knew all these years later that oh well I thought it was going to be funny you know I thought you know oh the comedian I thought it was going to be a I thought it was a joke I was in bad taste or I thought it was going to be funny and I guess it wasn't or you know it was poor taste or whatever I mean nothing like that is ever funny I mean is it funny if, if he does that to your sister or your daughter or your wife I mean that that's just all of those things but like I said in context of already assaulting me backstage and and every, all the little petty things he was doing to belittle me and 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 how he treated me and sort of you know in succession and then it ended with that and then how I was left to feel like without being able to say whatever I needed to say to his face that that's how I you know I'm like oh great while I was sleeping you do that to me and then I can't even say anything